Blueprints are designed to be reused. They're self-contained where the components and the code are independent. And when we create copies of them, those things are unique. They're composed of components. And due to that, the communication within the blueprints door, go ahead and dock it if you want to. And in our viewport, we can see our door. We can see that we have a trigger, which is a box that we're or control C it, and then go back into our blueprint. And I can right click, scroll down, paste here, or control V to paste. We have the basics of our code here. Now we don't need this force field or stack mesh component because we have our door right here. We can drag our door in, drop it, get a reference to it. We can now plug that in to our set collision and visibility. Now we need our events for our trigger. If we go into the trigger itself and in our details panel and we scroll to the bottom, we have access to all of our events. We have our begin. I'm also going to select these and drag them up so they're in the area where I want them. So when we begin overlap, we're going to check and see if it's the player. And if it's a player, set the visibility collision enabled. In this case, our other actor is going to be the grab all this code, copy it, and paste it. Go ahead and hook it up the end. When the other actor in the content browser, we can right click on the item we want to replace, choose replace selected actors with, and it's our current selection. Now you can see it's been replaced with our new door. It's our new blueprint. Now at this point and going forward, I'm going to recommend you go to change play mode and settings and change it to current camera location. What this allows to do is to start from wherever our camera is rather than the beginning, and we won't have to keep redoing the items we've done to get to our next section we're testing. I'll hit play. Now we should be able to walk up to our door. When we hit the trigger, it hides. We walk through it. We look back. Once we've left the trigger, it's gone away. And now our door.
door is opening automatically when our player walks through it. Now that we have a working door that we can walk up to, that will trigger, and then open and close, as we're going to use instead of the overlapping of the trigger. We'll right-click Custom Event, and we'll call this one Open Door. We'll do copy and paste them into our trigger door. Let's go ahead and compile it, cut it out, Control x for cutting on the keyboard, and then pasting. Now we have the events that will trigger when we start or overlap and end or overlap. Let's go back to our parent door and delete the trigger out of there. We'll compile and save and go back to our child. You'll notice when we come back into our trigger door, we now have two warnings. That's because that trigger component is no longer here. Let's fix that by going to Add, typing in Box Collision. We'll go ahead and select that. We'll rename box collision to trigger. We'll notice we get an error. That's fine. We can ignore it because we'll be fixing that in a second. We'll click on the trigger. Go back to our viewport. Move it more towards the center of our door. We'll resize the box extent to something more like 100, 200, 200. And maybe move it up. You can, of course, adjust this however you like. But now we have something similar to what we used before. Let's go ahead and compile and save. Go back into our event graph. You'll notice our errors are gone and our warnings are gone. Now, the only issue here is how do we actually call this closed door and open door event in our parent. Well, we would do a call to the parent. So if we go back to our door trigger. It's called open door when we want to open it. So we'll type in open door. And we have calling the function and the event open door. So we'll do the event open door. We can right click and we can add call to parent function. Choose this option. And now whenever we trigger the overlap, we're going to check for the player like before and then call the parent's open door function, which we can see right click replace with the door trigger. Now the door trigger shows up. Let's go ahead and play test. Now you should be able to walk through the door and it'll trigger, walk away, and it'll close. It's duplicated the same functionality as before, except now our base door just handles the opening and closing effects, while well our door trigger handles opening and closing using a trigger function. Now that we've looked at communication within a blueprint, we're going to take a look at how we can have two different blueprints talk to each other, but still maintain the reusability that we gain by using blueprints.
can ignore it because we'll be fixing that in a second. We'll click on the trigger, go back to our viewport, move it more towards the center of our door. We'll resize the box extent to something more like 100, 200, 200, and open door event in our parent. Well, we would do a call to the parent. So if we go back to our door trigger. It's called open door when we want to open it. So we'll type in open door. And we have calling the function and the event open door. So we'll do the event open door. We can right click and we can add call to parent function. Handles opening and closing using a trigger function. Now that we've looked at communication within a blueprint, we're going to take a look at how we can have two different blueprints talk to each other, but still maintain the reusability that we gain by using blueprints.